All right, hey gang, I wanted to shoot, go, shoot a video here going over how to use Medit Link software and especially their app Medit Design in your ortho workflow. It's a great free program. Ideally, if you have a Medit scanner, it makes sense to use it and uh, all your stuff will be stored in the cloud that way. But you actually don't have to have a Medit scanner to use this software. So go to meditlink.com download the software, check it out for yourself, because I'm going to show how I'm going to use the Meditlink software and import scans on that from a different scanner. So as long as it's STLs, you're good. I am now working moonlighting at a practice that I'm taking over their ortho for them, and they use Prime Scan scanners. So I just download the STL from that, I put it into a Google Drive, folder for all my case workups so that way if I don't have time to do it that day I can just work on them later work on them at home whatever and so in here I'm going to show how I'm going to use Medit design to do a lot of measurements including a Schwartz analysis so I'm going to create a patient and this is just going to be a test patient so you can see I'm going to hit register okay we're going to go to its case and we're going to go to file viewer if I don't have any files here right so what I'm going to do now is attach files I want to attach both of those files and there they go voila so now you have in the cloud you have your files so pretty cool way to organize things and then over here on the app box you can choose all these different apps to download what I'm going to be using right here is the Medit design right here okay so I'm going to go back to the case box and then I am going to click Medit design You could even mount these kind of in a, a virtual articulator if you wanted, but here I'm just going to do some basic, basic uh, measurements, okay? So one of the first things that I like to measure is inner molar width, because if you go to a lot of previous studies, especially by Jim McNamara, we want that inner molar width to be at least 35 millimeters or more. And so I usually like for that to be hit by 12 to 14 years age for girls and 14 to 16 for boys okay so by that time they should be at 35 millimeters intermolar width if not that's a sign that hey something's going on here so now I'm going to turn off the lower model I'm going to work off the upper model and the very first thing I'm going to do is measure the intermolar width I'm zooming in here so I'm going to measure from here to here the innermost portions right along the gum line here so what I'm going to do right here is go to measurement mode I'm going to hit collect between two points just like that and then I want to measure from here to there and so we are at 35.5 millimeters so that's great that means we're at a baseline I could still probably develop the arch a little bit more quote expand or laterally develop the arch a little bit more but we don't need really any auxiliaries for further expansion so that's the big thing I'm looking at there next while I'm here I like to go ahead and screen for possible two size discrepancies so first things I'm going to do is I'm going to measure and I'm working on a trackpad this I'm a little bit quicker if I'm on a mouse but that's all right so I'm going to measure my lengths of my incisors. This is going to help me plan if I'm using brackets. It's going to help me plan for where I want to set the bracket heights. But then also this is going to help me check for any two size discrepancies. Okay. So we're at 7.5 millimeters average there 9.5 millimeters tall average there pretty normal stuff. Now let's take a look at the width. 
So now I'm going to measure the widest part here and here. If you notice, these incisors are a little bit shovel shaped. So we may, for aesthetics, want to do some bonding at the end of treatment. There we go. You can move these around so they're not over the top of each other here. Okay, cool. So looking at things, so ideally when we look at central incisors, we want the width to be between 75 to 80% of the height. So if I just calculate that here, 9.5 times 0.75, we want it to be at least seven millimeters wide. Here we're well past that, we're at eight, so we're looking good there. Now for laterals, you want it to be about 65 to 70% of the width. So if we take 7.5 times 0.7, be at least five and a quarter, so we're at six, so we're looking good there. And then lastly, we want our laterals to be about 66 to 75%, so two thirds to three quarters, the width of the centrals. So if I take a little look at the width of the centrals, we want them to be at least five millimeter uh, 5.3 millimeters wide which we are so i'm not really too worried about any two size discrepancy right now really it'd just be to maybe just give it a little bit more of a pleasing shape but very quickly like when i'm not annotating a video this is i go a lot quicker than this so very quickly i can get some great data well now let's kick this up a notch here and let's say on average we have 6.1 millimeters for the laterals and we'll say on average, we'll say on average 8.2, so 6.1, 8.2. So together, our width across here, I'm going to round up to 30, okay? So using the Schwartz analysis, what you do is you measure the mesial distal widths of the upper incisors both central and lateral and you combine those together and then from there that gives you how much your premolar and molar regions should be so from the premolar region for example on a regular width phase it should be plus seven and in the molar region it should be plus 14. for a wider phase or if you want a little bit more expansion you'd want eight millimeters in the premolar region and you'd want 16 millimeters in the molar region. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So how this Schwartz analysis works, so let me go back to measurements. I'm going to measure this distal ridge, or this distal, um, I should say, uh, central uh, distal groove here is what I'm trying to say. I want to measure from this distal groove to distal groove of these first molars. And so here we're at 36, where we wanted to be at about 37. So that's pretty good. We'll get some development with just uh, broadening the arches and uprighting those teeth a bit since they're rolled in. So that's not a problem. And then kind of in this central groove here, central groove here, we want it to be about 44 to 46, somewhere in there. And we're at 47, so we're looking pretty good there. So that's telling me that we don't really have any big width issues going on. Now, I'm gonna turn this one off, I'm gonna turn the bottom one on, and let's measure those as well. So here, we wanna be measuring from about this mesial buckle embrasure area here. And we want that to be about the same as that upper. So that SI plus seven or eight. So we'd want to be about 37, 38, which we are here. 
And then if we check that mesial buckle cusp, because we want that into that central groove right there. So again, we want it to be between 44 and 46. Could be more, that's okay too. And here we're at 47. So this all tells me very quickly, and I've done a great up, very thorough to check for two size discrepancies and all that stuff, intermolar width, Schwartz analysis. That's the nice thing about this Medit design software is once you get your flow down, you can check all this stuff under five minutes, including uploading the scans and all that stuff. So it's a pretty cool software. There's some other things you can do with it, but I'm trying to keep this video succinct. So I hope this helps and yeah, uh, download the software, give it a try and let me know what you think. All right guys, take care, bye-bye.